Today, I'm going to share with you guys lessons that I got from a friend of mine who works for a $500,000 per month CEO. So my friend is a client success manager for a coaching program, and they do $500,000 a month. And he's always talking to the CEO, and I'm always asking him things about the CEO, personality traits, habits, things that he thinks about sales, marketing, business, whatever. So we just had a call uh, yesterday, and I asked him, what are the personality traits of your CEO that have made him so successful. He actually said there's three. He said there's three things that he has. And I kind of, I wrote them down here on a sticky note for you guys, so I wanted to share it with you. So number one was he has unshakable high standards. His standards are extremely high. He, even when different team members that are in different departments have Word documents and they have different fonts, he doesn't like that. He said, I want all the fonts to be the same, I want continuity. That might be extreme to you, but to a guy like that who's really trying to go somewhere, you have to have those kinds of high standards. He doesn't get to a point where he's doing 500,000 a month with one business, not having high standards. You must have absolute high standards. A great book to read, um, he didn't tell me this is more for me, but a great book to read that you can look at is Relentless by Tim Grover. It's one of my personal favorite books. He was Michael Jordan's trainer, he trained Kobe, he trained Dwayne Wade, he trained a lot of guys. He trained Tracy McGrady, Gilbert Arenas, and he talks about having those high standards. And so you can talk, you can, you can go read that book. But if you're not going to have high standards for yourself and uphold those high standards, you can never expect anyone else to be able to have those same standards with you. If you want to hire a team, if you want to work with artists, how can you expect artists to want to pay you a lot of money and hold you to a high standard if you don't even hold yourself to a high standard? So that's the first key lesson is having really, really, really high standards. Number two is speed. So my friend had shared with me that when the CEO needs to do something or his team needs something from him, he will get it done within one to two days. Um, I couldn't remember the exact example, but one of his, I think one of his team members was like, hey, one of his team members had said, hey, we need a training on this thing subject we need to we need you we need to make a specific training for our clients we don't have it two days later the ceo says to that guy hey you want to take a look at the training i just made and the guy goes dang you already made the training in two days the way that that ceo operates is if something needs to get done it's going to get done as fast and as not just as fast as possible but it's going to get done at a high standard remember he has high standards so when things get done they get done at the highest level and they get done fast And so I want to also discuss another idea about speed, right? That's why I actually mentioned the standards first is because you need to have high standards first established because if you just get a lot of things done fast, but they're not done well, then it doesn't matter. For example, if you're a producer, you're like, oh yeah, I'm banging, I'm banging out five beats a day. Well, what if all five of those beats suck, right? Wouldn't it be a lot? And and by the way, the volume thing is, is a, is a concept I struggle with a lot myself because I'm more on the side of doing more. But if you're gonna do more and it all sucks, it's not worth you doing more. It's more worth it if you do less, that's all good. But point being, you need to have a high standard and do things fast. So you need to get to a point where you're able to do five beats in a day that are all good beats. Maybe one or two don't work out, but you need to be able to do that. You need to be able to film an ad and you need to be able to do it quickly and it needs to be good. There should be no reasons or excuses. And there's certain things that can take longer than others. There's certain things that can take shorter than others, but there's certain things like, for example, an advertisement is what's going to get you in front of your potential clients and will make you money. There's not really anything else more important than you filming and editing and and releasing an ad if you want to make money getting clients. So that shouldn't take you a long time. Or if you have a client you're working with and they just sent you their vocals and you're guaranteeing that you're going to get that done in two weeks, there's really not many more things important than you finishing those vocals for that artist. So you need to be able to also prioritize things, but you need to be able to do things and get things done fast. And there's a really great quote by Alex Hermosi. I feel like I I talk about him a lot, but he's he's one of my favorites. Alex Hermosi says, volume negates luck. I'm going to actually add to the quote. Volume negates luck and money provides volume. When you spend money, usually you're able to get more things done. So I'll give you a great example. Um, Let's discuss getting clients, okay? Let's say, and this is just a wild example. Let's say every, this is a good example. 
Let's say for every 1,000 followers you get on Instagram, 10 of them become clients. 10 of those, 10 of those 1,000 become customers. Those are pretty realistic numbers, by the way. And I'm talking about if these clients are paying you one, two, three, four, five grand. You're probably only gonna land like 10 out of 1,000. By the way, which is totally fine to, to land 10 followers out of 1,000. But so if that's the case, if you need 1,000 followers to get 10 clients, how fast can you get those followers? And it could be followers, it could be inbound DMs, it could be leads, whatever. If you're gonna do something such as cold DMing, which I actually suggest you do if you don't have money, you should cold DM. But if you're gonna cold DM people and not spend money on ads, like you have to realize that it means you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to do 35 outreach a day, every day, seven days a week to reach a thousand, right? Or what you can do is you can spend money, right? So let's say you spend hundred dollars a day on ads and you get, you know, whatever. I don't know the exact numbers, what they would be. You spend a hundred a day to get the DMs. Instead of you having to physically spend time to increase the volume, you can spend money to increase the volume. So volume negates luck and money provides volume, right? So that's a huge lesson. Um, and then the final lesson that my friend said about that CEO is he has a grand vision. He has a huge vision. His vision is we want to help a hundred million of our ideal client. We want to help a hundred million of our ideal client. A hundred million? Dude, that's a lot of people, right? That's a third of the United States. So, or it's like a fourth of the United States. So it's really, really important that you have a grand vision as well, right? If you just say, oh, I just want to make enough to pay the bills. Well, that's not a lot. I just want to make enough to be able to support my family. Meh. Why don't you have a bigger vision? Why can't you say, I want to serve a million artists? I want a million artists to have my songs. Or I want a million songs to be released. Or I want one of my songs to get a million streams. I'm not a huge fan of streams, but it's a good metric. A lot of people care about streams. You probably do. You know, I want one of my artists that I work with to get a million streams. I want to help them get a million streams. See what I'm saying? So these are the three lessons, having extremely high standards, getting things done super fast and having an extremely big vision. These are all the lessons that me and my friend got from a $500,000 a month CEO.